Good morning, everyone. My name is Jose Avila, and I'm with uh, All Pro uh, Association of Latino Landscape Professionals. And uh, today, uh, we're going to show you how to prune uh, sago palm. We're going to show you just the basics on how to prune sago palms and uh, how to do a little bit of your general maintenance uh, and how to keep up uh, with the, uh, your lush green um, uh, leaves here on, on this uh, beautiful sago palm we have here with us. Um, you could utilize various uh, tools for the uh, pruning process. Uh, you could utilize a uh, serrated um, blade uh, cutter. I have uh, some uh, pruners here on my pouch. You could use, also use uh, some hand pruners. Whatever suits the need for you, whatever is best uh, for you to uh, uh, prune them. You don't really don't have to choose one over the other. It's just what works best for you in uh, this case. Okay, so now we're gonna go through the process of uh, showing you how to prune them now that I've shown you which type of tools you could go ahead and use. We're gonna set that blade right there. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and use the uh, hand pruners. It's, it's my pro personal preference on, on uh, how to uh, prune them. But you, like I said, you could go on about how you use more comfortable for you. Okay, so number one thing what you really wanna do with, uh, before you begin is you wanna really watch out for the uh, prickliness on the leaves, okay? There's also some thorns. Um, right here we may get a little bit of close-up or so you could see them right here right where my finger is so you may want to be careful with something like that uh, not to uh, hurt yourself or prick or yourself okay um, maybe um, wear some gloves which in my case I'm not doing but uh, I'm used to it, so uh, it's just, you know, for your own protection. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you always want to start on the inside, at the bottom, into the trunk of the plant of the sago palm. Uh, you want to get as close as you can to the trunk itself. and work your way around the, the, the palm. You don't wanna to cut too much off the top so that you don't have any leaves left. And you just work your way as much as you can around the plant. As you can see here, we're starting to thin out some of the plant, and you can see where I've made my cuts, okay? Um, and we are leaving some of the leaves on top of the uh, trunk of the plant so that it won't look uh, bare uh, on top of it. In the process of this, if some of the thorns are starting to pinch you, you could go ahead and start cutting them. Some of them may be a little difficult <laughs> to prune. Some of them may be a little easier. Now, it's also a matter on how much of it you wanna, you wanna thin it out, how much plant you want to get rid of, how much, how many leaves, how thin you want it, it's, it's really up to you or up to your gardener if you have somebody that's, if you're paying somebody to do it, if you like doing it yourself and you don't want nobody 
touching them, but you, it's it's okay. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and take take a look and see how it looks. Okay, so we've uh, cut as much as we can on the front here. Okay, um, we have this last one right here. We'll, I don't like it, so we'll go ahead and cut that out. We have plenty of leaves here anyways. Now, I can't get back behind this uh, section of the plant here so uh, with my hand pruner. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna go ahead and use our serrated knife here. So now we'll go to the other side. Okay, uh, so now that we've pruned our uh, our sago palm, we utilize this uh, serrated uh, our serrated tool knife here, right behind our uh, our uh, sago palm here. It was a little hard for us to get it there in the beginning with the pruner, so that's why I, I uh, my choice of option was to use this tool right here. We've left uh, one to two rows uh, around the uh, top of the trunk of the sago palm, of our sago palm here. And as you can see right here, we have uh, this nice, clean, real close cut here to the trunk look uh, so that you, it, it'll, it'll, it'll give you a nice, a nice uh, trunk look to, a nice clean trunk look to this. Okay, um, usually what you, this is what you, you really wanna do with a sago palm. You don't wanna go ahead and as you can see, uh, our viewers, they've cut here and they left this much chunk, about an inch to two inches right here. And this doesn't give you a nice appealing uh, cosmetic look to the plant. It, you know, it, it takes away from, from the beauty of it. Um, you, we could go ahead and come here and, and cut this out right here, you know, and just make it a little more of a cleaner look to, to our to our palm, which is a, really a personal preference, and that's what I like, you know. I don't like leaving this this uh, this uh, growth right here uh, just because uh, it, to me it doesn't look right. Some people it may, but just, you know, the real look of the, uh, to appreciate the, uh, the look of the plant. Um, so, uh, as far as, uh, well, we'll go into a little bit of a maintenance situation. As far as maintenance, you could go ahead and give it a, uh, uh, like a, uh, uh, not a fertilizer where it doesn't have too much nitrogen, where it's really not going to burn the plant or hurt the plant. Um, they, uh, you could get your uh, fertilizer. It could be a balanced fertilizer. You could get it at uh, your nursery, at your Home Depot, if, you're, uh, if you have close, one close by you. Um, you could uh, give it organic fertilizers. You could give it something like kelp meal, uh, seaweed extract, which comes in a liquid form, uh, grow power, which also is a really good fertilizer. Uh, it comes in a uh, granulated form. Um, you could give it some super thrive if some of you guys have heard of super thrive and know what that is you could also give it some of that which is not a fertilizer but uh you could go ahead and give it a shot of that um this one right here in particular it's a nice lush green plant uh sago palms in general they could handle some sun in the um coastal areas uh, in your linen areas where it gets real hot, try not to put them so much into where they're gonna get an afternoon sunny location. Try to put them where they're gonna get a late afternoon sunny location, probably something a little bit about after um, two, three o'clock until the sun sets. Then that would be a good location. Uh, or from morning sun to the afternoon, about 12-ish, one o'clock, um, where the sun is not too intense that way the leaves won't get burned. And a good sample of some of the leaves maybe that may have gotten burned 
it's this one right here although it's kind of hard to say because since this flat here it's on these uh let me see it's on the um north side of this property right here of this house right here um it really doesn't get a whole lot of sun but in this case something else may have happened to it uh but it's really only this leaf right here uh we went ahead and cut out the rest of the leaves as you could see and uh, 90 percent of the foliage wasn't you know damaged uh like this it was just this particular one so really you really don't want to don't have a lot to worry about when it's just one two or three leaves um it could have been a lot of things that made up happen in the root structure and it made up uh you know glanced out to one of the leaves right here one of the foliages right here on this particular plant that we uh went ahead and trimmed uh in some other cases uh you may notice some yellow leaves uh maybe with some burnt tips, and that could be inconsistent water. Inconsistent water can uh, be whereas you're just watering a little bit uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and not really getting it deep into where the root structure is, which is what the plant needs. Anyways, you wanna give it a good drink of, uh, drink of water. Um, you wanna give it sufficient amount of water where it just you're you're staying if you're watering with a with a hose and sprayer uh you're just kind of staying there uh if you don't have an irrigation system although if you do have an irrigation system then that may be a different story you're gonna have to make adjustments so that uh your um sago palm or your pumps are getting the sufficient amount of water at the root structure um well also that goes with a drip system you want to tell your gardener or if you are familiar with a drip system to get the amount the gallons per minute or gallons per hour so that it'll accommodate that situation uh to your uh, sago palm uh okay so uh, uh we'll be go ahead and talking about some other things about sago palm in our next uh visit and i uh, hope you like this one and thank you uh so uh, once again my name is Jose Avila and we're from all pro thank you